Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin? Thank God, the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Paul very explicitly gives us a very accurate description of this addiction, of which we are all in the throes of and struggling with. And we need to come to the Lord and see how we might find deliverance from this addiction. And today in these passages of Joshua, primarily jo jo Joshua chapter 7, I want to just kind of give you three areas to consider today as to what it is was happening in the lives of the children of Israel and how that applies to you and I today. I want us, first of all, to see the cause of sin. It's in verse 1. The cause of sin is compromise. Maybe jot that down in the bulletin outline right next to that first point. Compromise. Compromise. I find that when I write things down, I remember them more easily. How about you? Yeah. Compromise. Verse 1 of Joshua 7. The Israelites, however, were unfaithful regarding the things set apart for destruction. Achan, son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of what was set apart, and the Lord's anger burned against the Israelites. Compromise. Compromise will always get you in trouble with God. Compromise from the commands of God, any deviation from the commands of God are going to cause us great grief and difficulty, and we are going to subject ourselves to the judgment of God as a result of our compromise. One man said it very well. He said this, man calls it an accident. God calls it an abomination. Man calls it a blunder. God calls it a blindness. Man calls it a defect. God calls it a disease. Man calls it a chance. God calls it a choice. Man calls it an error. God calls it enmity. Man calls it fascination. God calls it fatality. Man calls it an infirmity. God calls it an iniquity. Man calls it luxury. God calls it leprosy. Man calls it liberty. God calls it lawlessness. Man calls it a trifle. God calls it a tragedy. Man calls it a mistake. God calls it madness. Man calls it a weakness. God calls it willfulness. It's easy, my dear friend, for us to justify or to rationalize or to talk ourselves out of it. But today I want it to be known to us today what God says and what God commands is His standard and His law for us to follow so far as His Word is concerned. And as I said previously, any deviation from that is going to bring upon us the judgment of God. We need to understand this today. The cause of sin, it's compromise. In the case of the children of Israel, we see in chapter 7 of Joshua, it was arrogance. Arrogance. After turning to Joshua, they came and they reported to him all of those who went in. This is the description of those who went in to conquer the little city of Ai. That's spelled A-I. Ai. Here's what happened. When the children of Israel, under God's command and the leadership of Joshua, had this great and mighty victory in, in, in conquering Jericho, here's what happened, and here's what happens in your life when we go through great victories. Often we become casual, and often we become careless, and often we let down our guard. And we think, oh, I'm pretty smart. In fact, we can begin to have this attitude of feeling invincible. This speaks of arrogance, right? 
It says that instead of sending all of the armies of Israel into Ai, the spies came back and they said, oh, there are not very many of them in Ai. Let's just send two or 3,000 of our people to attack Ai. And it says in these verses of Joshua chapter 7 that the Israelites were completely defeated. They were defeated because they didn't take this battle with seriousness and with sobriety as they did previously when they fought the battle in Jericho. It was because of the obedience to the Lord that brought down those walls of Jericho in Joshua chapter 6. And yet the people immediately went back to their own agendas. I find historically in the Bible, as far as Israel is concerned, have you ever read anything about the history of Israel? They were up and they were down. And they were up and they were down. They had great victories, they let down their guard, and they went into defeat. They sobered up, they repented, they went high on the mountain to victory again, and then they became casual, and they became careless, and they went down to defeat. Does that kind of describe a lot of how we are tempted to live our lives? Yeah. That is an accurate description. And when we let down our guard, and when we become careless, Satan sees our weakness and he enters in at that moment and he provides a temptation that we thought would never come near us and we find ourselves giving over to that temptation because we let down our guard and we became arrogant thinking that we were invincible. So we have to guard our hearts, amen? Because of arrogance that can enter in, because of disobedience. God gave the command. He told Joshua and those of the armies of Israel, when you go in to conquer the land and to take the city, you are forbidden to take certain things from the city. There are certain things that were specifically allocated or designated to be placed within the treasury of God. But Achan, that's his name, Achan chose to disobey. Let me just say something today as a preface. When you and I choose to disobey, when you disobey, you are going to be Achan. A-C-H-I-N-G. Did you follow that? Maybe that humor didn't work so well today. I don't know. <laughs> Disobedience will always lead us to painfulness in our lives. And when we do the same thing, when we choose to withhold our tithe, when we choose to cease in our giving to the work and to the kingdom of God, what we do is we bring destruction on our lives and our families and our church. Your disobedience and my disobedience is not limited to affecting just ourselves. My disobedience affects other people and not just myself. Amen? Amen. We need to understand this. And I, I, I want to say very specifically to the leadership of International Christian Assembly. I want to say to our staff and to our leadership team and to every person here who leads a ministry and oversees a part of the ministries of ICA, I want to ask you today to please don't be an Aiken. Don't allow yourself, especially in this place of leadership in the kingdom of God, to disobey God and to rightfully take what is God's and take it for yourself and rob Him of what is His. Live your life as a life of obedience. There are also other desires that we see evident in Achan's life. They reflect our own desires. We would call them desires of the flesh. So we see arrogance, we see disobedience in this picture of Joshua 7. We see desires of the flesh. A Achan wanted the wealth. I've asked this question numerous times before. I know that we think that our lives would be better off if we had a million dollars in our hands, right? 